This video is about computation with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, absolute value, and exponents. It's also about calculator skills with negative signs, fractions, and decimals. So first, let's look at some calculator skills involving fractions and decimals. Remember, whenever we're trying to put a fraction into our calculator that we always want to use, the division key. So remember, the division key is located above the multiplication on your calculator. So let's try typing these fractions in in order to get a decimal. So the first one is 2 fifths. So we're going to type 2 divided by 5, enter, and we get a decimal of 0.4. The next fraction is 1 third. 1 divided by 3 is 0.3, and it keeps repeating. So we're going to say 0.3 with a bar above it. You can also use your calculator to help you reduce a fraction or change a decimal into a fraction. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try typing 120 divided by 4.5 into our calculator. And as a decimal, we get 26.6 repeating. Now we want to take that and convert it into a fraction that no longer has a decimal like this denominator does. So we're going to hit math, which is the third key down on the left hand side. Enter, enter, and it'll give us our reduced fraction of 80 over 3. Let's try two more reducing and changing into fractions. So in the first one we have 0.20 and we want to turn that into a fraction. So 0 0.20 math, enter, enter, which gives us our fraction of 1 fifth. Convert 725 over 15 to a reduced fraction. So we're going to do 725 divided by 15, enter to turn it into a decimal, and then math, enter, enter, and our reduced fraction is 145 over 3. So now let's look at placing fractions and decimals in order from least to greatest. So think about it as a number line. So in your number line, you would have 0 in the middle. To the left, we'd have our negative numbers. And to the right, we'd have our positive numbers. So in order to compare an order from least to greatest, it's helpful to convert them all to decimals if they're not already. So we need to convert 3 fourths. So 3 divided by 4 is 0.75. And negative 9 divided by 8 is negative 1.125. So we're going to start ordering from least to greatest. So remember, we're going to start with negative since there are negative numbers here. So we're between 0.3, negative 1.3, and negative 1.125. If it's helpful, you can always add two more zeros to this to compare based on place values. Because this is 1.3, this is further away from zero, which makes it our least number. Then our next negative, because it was given in a fraction, we're going to write it as a fraction here. We have no more negatives, so now we're going to put our zero, and then we're looking at our positives. So when it's positives, it's helpful to think of it in terms of money, which one means you have more. So if I have 0.75 or 0 0.78, 0 0.75 is bigger, so we would have 3 fourths and then 0.78. Pause this video to try number two, and then press play once you've ordered them from least to greatest. So after completing number two, a couple of things to be careful about. With your negatives, the bigger that the number is on the bottom, the closer that the fraction is going to be to zero, because remember, that's more pieces you're breaking it down into. So negative one-third is actually less than negative one-fourth, because negative one-fourth would be closer to zero. Also with one-half, on your calculator, you would get 0.5. But I added 0 0.50, so it made it easier to compare when I had two decimal places for everything. Now, we're also going to use parentheses when they're helpful to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Remember that parentheses are used to separate a part of an expression. We're going to use parentheses anytime we see a fraction. No matter if we're solving or if we're graphing later on, we're always going to use parentheses to keep our fraction together. So just for example, to go over the skill, the first one is 2 thirds divided by 8 fifths. So we'd have parentheses 2 divided by 3, divide by 8 divided by 5. Notice that both fractions are in parentheses. Enter. That gives us a decimal. So we hit math, enter, enter. And our fraction is 5 twelfths. In part B, 4 doesn't need a decimal or 
parentheses because it's a whole number, times parentheses 3 divided by 5, close parentheses, math, enter, enter after we get our decimal. So we get 12 fifths. C, 2 thirds parentheses around that plus parentheses 3 divided by 5. Math, enter, enter. So our decimal would be 19 over 15. D, our fraction is parentheses 4 divided by 7 minus parentheses 1 divided by 6. Enter. And then math, enter, enter to get our fraction. So we have 17 over 42. Let's go over a few helpful tips for when we're working with fractions. So when adding and subtracting fractions, remember that there must be a common denominator, which is the bottom of the fraction. Then when you add or subtract the numerator, the denominator does not change. So once you have a common denominator, that number is going to stay the same. When multiplying fractions, remember that you're going to multiply the numerator together and the denominator together. When you're multiplying fraction or dividing fractions, remember to take the second fraction and turn it into a reciprocal and then it turns into a multiplication problem. So in number three, we have one third plus one third. This one's easy because our denominators are both the same as three. So we're just gonna add our numerator together to get two over three. In number four, it becomes a little bit trickier because we do not have a common denominator. So we need to make a common denominator first. So I know that I can multiply four by something to get to eight, and that number is two. So I'm gonna multiply the first fraction by two over two. So I get 6 over 8 minus 9 over 8. Now that they have common denominators, I can just do 6 minus 9, and I get negative 3 eighths. Number 5, same idea. I need to get my common denominator, so I'm going to multiply the fraction by 2 over 2. Remember, you have to multiply the numerator and the denominator in order for the fraction to change because you're making an equivalent fraction then. So this becomes 6 over 8 plus 5 over 8, and then I can add my numerators together, so I get 11 over 8. Now, number 6 is a little bit trickier because I don't know a number that I can multiply to get from one of my denominators to the other. So instead, I have to think about what's a number that 4 and 3 both multiply to? 12. So I'm going to make my common denominator 12. In order to do that, the first fraction needs to be multiplied by 3 over 3, so I get 33 over 12. In the second fraction, I would need to multiply by 4 over 4. So I get 4 twelfths. And then I can subtract my numerators. So I get 29 over 12. Number 7, multiplying fractions. So we're going to multiply our numerators together and our denominators together and then reduce if needed. So 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 7 is 21. I know I can take a 3 out of both of these numbers, so this reduces to 4 sevenths. I could also do that in my calculator. 12 divided by 21. Math, enter, enter. And I see it reduces to 4 over 7. Number 8. Make sure with this negative you just pick one number for the negative to stay with. So I always pick the number in the numerator. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 over 56, and that does not reduce. Number nine, when we're dividing fractions, the first fraction stays the same as two-fifths. We change to multiplication, and we flip to get the reciprocal of our second equation. So now it's six, negative 6 over 4. Now I can multiply across negative 12 over 20, and I know that that reduces to three-fifths because I can take a 4 out of both numbers or I can just double check on my calculator, type in the fraction, math, enter, enter, and I have negative 3 fifths. Number 10, this is still a division problem, it's just written differently, so we're going to write off to the side, 
The first fraction stays the same, negative 2 fifths, times, and we need the reciprocal of the second, negative 7 eighths. So now when I multiply, negative 2 times negative 7 is 14 over 40. I know I can take a 2 out of both of these, which reduces to 7 twentieths. Or again, I can check in my calculator and see if I get a reduced fraction, which is 7 twentieths. In number 11, this is where it gets tricky. Remember, any whole number can be written as over 1. So instead of 5, we can put it as 5 over 1. So when we multiply, it's now 3 fourths times 1 fifth. And I multiply the numerator and the denominator, so I end up with 3 twentieths. The last idea that we're going to talk about today is net change. So net change is how much are you changing from one place to another when you move. So we're talking about elevation for our net change right now. In order to increase your, increase your elevation, your net change is going to be positive. When you decrease your elevation, your net change will be negative. To find your net change, it's always your end point minus your start point. So we're going to look at some situations and describe the net change. So number 12, Jackson starts at an elevation of 745 feet to an elevation of 10 feet. So he moved from a high point to a low point. So logically, we should know we're probably going to get a negative net change. So this is my start. So this is my end. So I'm going to do ending elevation minus starting elevation. And I get negative 735. So I know that I have a negative elevation, which means I'm decreasing. So now I'm going to write a sentence, Jackson elevation decreased by 735 feet. Do not put a negative here because you already said it decreased, which is already taking care of the negative then. Let's look at another one. Tucker starts at an elevation of negative 5 feet above sea level and travels to an elevation of 134 feet. So this was our start, and this was our end. So when I do my elevation this time, I do 134 minus negative 5, which is 139 feet. Because my elevation is positive, that means I have an increase. So we would say Tucker's elevation increased by 139 feet. Let's look at two more examples. So describe Julia's change in elevation using complete sentences. So looking at the picture, Julia tra travels from the telescopes so the telescopes, if we look at this, has an elevation of 80 feet. That's our start. To the small lake. So the small lake has an elevation of 40 feet. This is our end point. So we want to find the change in elevation. So we're going to do end minus start is negative 40 feet. So we would say that Julia's elevation decreased, because it was negative, by 40 feet. Again, we don't put the negative because we already said decreased. 15, Julia travels from the beginning of the trail, which is at negative 60, we'll say feet again, to the waterfall. So the waterfall is positive 60 feet, which is our end. So we have n minus the start is 120 feet. So Julia's elevation increased by 120 feet. 